Today, we're gonna to talk about language standards and why they matter. And we're gonna talk a little about the history of Python. Trust me, it all connects. So today's video is for the beginners out there and probably some of the intermediate programmers as well. Because when you're just starting out, you get thinking that C is C and C++ is C++ and Ruby is Ruby and Python is Python. And the reality is it is more complicated than that. Before I get too far into it, today's video is brought to you by all the wonderful people who support this channel through Patreon, through merch. And I wanna give a big thanks to all of you for your support. But now back to language standards. Because like I said, C isn't just C. It's, it's not just one language because languages evolve over time. Time, features evolve over time. As features get added, things get more complicated. So for example, let's take a look at C. So C was born in the 70s. And during the 70s and 80s, there wasn't really a formal specification for the language. The closest thing we had was this book right here, Kernighan and Ritchie. Well, it wasn't this book. It was the first edition of this book. Sometimes you'll hear this called K&R. It's still a great book. I definitely recommend it. And then around 1990, things start to get standardized a little bit and we got ANSI C. And since then, the C standard has been revised in 1999. 2011, 2017, and 2020 X. So sometime in the not too distant future. And each time new features get added, minor rules get changed and the language evolves. But doesn't this create a lot of headaches? And yeah, sometimes it does. I mean, it's a lot like how English evolves, like how people today may have a hard time understanding Shakespeare because the words we use aren't quite the same as the words they used back then. And of course it's an imperfect analogy, but the point is, is you need to keep track of the version of the language that you're working with. And in practice, this usually isn't too bad as long as you stick to the core language features. And that's because languages try really hard to preserve backwards compatibility. That is, new versions typically add stuff, but code that was written for older versions of the language should still work in the newer versions. At least that's the general idea. So code that was written for ANSI C should still work in C11 and C17. And that's because most of the changes were additive. So they added things to the language, they didn't take them away. Now, some of you may have noticed that I haven't talked a lot about language standards in my videos. Maybe I should have mentioned them a little bit more. But one reason for this is that in my videos, I try to stick to core language features, features that are available way back, you know, hopefully in ANSI C, but of course not all of them, but I try not to use features that are only available in the most recent versions of the language because I would like, it doesn't always turn out this way, but I would like for all of you to be able to run my code regardless of what standard you are running against. Like I said, it doesn't always work out that way, but that's my goal. But okay, but what if I wanna actually use a new language feature? Maybe I wanna use type inference with the auto keyword in C++ like this. We'll probably have a future video on that, but for today's purpose, this is a feature that became available in C++ 11 or the 2011 version of the C++ standard. And when I compile this code, my compiler might by default use a standard that will work. But if I wanna guarantee that we're using C++ 11, I can do this by specifying the standard I want to use on the command line. And so adding this flag, like this is gonna work both for Clang and for GCC. And maybe you've seen something like this in some code that you found online. You can also use this to restrict certain features. I know some faculty members will do this in their classes to ensure that their students are all working with the same language. But this also helps avoid the scenario where code compiles just fine on my machine, but not on yours and vice versa, which is super annoying. But if we're all say using C++ 17, then there's a better chance that my code will compile on your machine and your code comp will compile on my machine. Of course, this isn't a surefire way to guarantee anything because there's a lot of other ways that we can cause code to not compile or not run, but it does make things a little simpler and increases the probability that things are gonna work out the way we want them to. And now I've shown you how this works with C and C++. If we're in an interpreted language like Python, well, it's a little different, but language versions are still an issue. But since we don't have a compiler, we don't necessarily tell the compiler what version of the language to use. So instead we typically ask the interpreter like this, what version it is. And things actually get a little muddier here with Python. Don't get me wrong, folks, I really like Python, but rather than having a formal language standard, and maybe they do have one somewhere, I mean, other than the grammar on the website, which is sort of a formal language specification. But the point is, at least the point that I'm trying to make, is that this Python version is the version of the interpreter, and the language has changed and does change along with the interpreter, but most new interpreter versions don't involve a change to the language. Which brings me to an interesting story. So once upon a time, a long time ago, back in 2008-ish, Python did change and specifically the Python community wanted to change Python in a way that 
Jupiter would not be backwards compatible. And that worried a lot of people, of course, because they're saying, what's going to happen to all this code that's already out there? We're going to break it all. Are our users going to stop using us? Are people going to be mad? Or are we going to cost people a lot of money? And of course, who knows what the answer really is to that, because we'll never find out. Because what they did instead is they created two different languages. You had Python 2.7 and Python 3, which effectively were different languages and got maintained independently for a long time, until fairly recently. And at that time, existing Python users, like me, gave a big sigh of relief. And we relaxed and we kept on using our existing code just as is and thought, oh, I'll update it later. Because from our perspective, nothing had changed. And that is as long as we continued to use Python 2.7. And the idea at the time was that people would eventually, fairly quickly, hopefully, migrate their code from 2.7 to 3.0. And then once everyone made the shift, then they could just toss 2.7 and everybody would be on Python 3, which of course didn't happen. And ever since 2008, the Python community has basically been maintaining two different languages. And of course, by now they have officially end of life 2.7. So people are switching, people are having to switch if they want to have updates to their language and to their interpreter, which is really important if you care about things like security. And I have to admit, I have some old 2.7 code that I've been updating lately. I mean, it's not like I just started. I mean, I've been moving code over for the last 10 years, but it's really been annoying actually trying to remember which version of Python I'm in. And honestly, if if I have to add parentheses to another print statement function, whatever, I'm going to it's OK, I'm good. But I do wonder if they regret it. I mean, the decision to fork the language, because seriously, maintaining the two languages had to be expensive. And I sometimes wonder if they think in hindsight, I mean, everything's clear in hindsight, but maybe it would have been better if they had just said no backwards compatibility, rip off the Band-Aid, everybody gets on board with Python 3. And yeah, we would have made a lot of noise and it would have been, people would have been annoyed. I would have been annoyed, but I would have saved myself a lot of headache down the road because I would have just had to fix everything back then. And I guess we'll never know, but I hope this was interesting, helpful, or maybe gave you a reason to smile today. Like the video if you liked it, subscribe so you don't miss my next one, and I'll see you next week.